hello and a warm welcome to Conversations Shaping Uganda's Business Landscape. This is Business Perspective and I am Isabella Tugume. On the program this week, the Uganda Revenue Authority has been up in arms with traders engaging in value-added tax invoice trading. Last year, over 10 tax consultants found engaging in this tax fraud scheme were arrested and prosecuted at the Anti-Corruption Division of the High Court. Also on the show, Uganda's position in the export market. What happened after the Ogoa burn? URA is set to recover over 660 million shillings from penalties and taxes due from taxpayers who play cat and mouse with the taxman on the electronic physical receipting and invoicing solution, or better known as IFRS. Since February 2024 to date, URA has so far penalized 110 taxpayers who were discovered floating the system. This has not gone down well with traders, citing harassment and unfair tax policies. Is there a problem with Uganda's taxation system? How much has IFRIS been able to combat VAT fraud? This starts our conversation this week. Over the years, URA has registered a poor performance in VAT collections. In the first quarter of the 2022-2023 financial year, for example, the VAT collections were at a paltry 761.69 billion and yet in comparison, pay as you earn contributed a total of 901.13 billion. The poor VAT performance has been as a result of continuous invoice trading, which according to URA, has led to revenue loss estimated at over 28 billion per annum. Our VAT contribution to total collection right now is at about 15%. And that is very low regionally and internationally. Our neighbors in the region, their VAT contribution to total collection is about 35% on average. So that shows you that we are still underperforming on VAT collection simply because not that VAT is not collected, it is charged, it is collected, the challenge it is not remitted. So somebody is enjoying money that is absolutely not theirs. VAT fraud manifests itself through numerous cases of sales suppressions or under declaration of sales, non-issuance of tax invoices in some cases, over issuance of invoices in other cases, false refund claims and fictitious purchases with no movement of goods and services among others. Several VAT transactions occur across the country over a taxable period of one month and URA does not have the manpower to verify all these transactions, let alone the invoices issued. This presents a loophole that fraudulent taxpayers have exploited to erroneously manipulate the system and claim refunds even when no transaction leading to the issuance of invoices has taken place. In some cases, the taxpayers undertaking invoice trading pay lots of money to obtain the fictitious invoices to use in evading taxes. In order to combat this fraud, URA introduced an electronic system that can verify and issue easily traceable invoices for use in people's businesses. Countries around the world have come up with technology, have come up with systems to make it easy for businesses to know how much VAT is owed. Otherwise, without a system, it is possible for you to collect VAT and actually you fail to pay it thinking that it is part of your operational capital or part of your profits. So the system that we're using in Uganda is what we call the electronic physical receipting and invoicing solution, famously called IFRIS. So it is a solution that helps businesses to manage their purchases, to manage their stock, to manage their sales, so that at the end of a month, it is clear what your input VAT is, your output VAT is, it's clear what your purchases were, it is clear what your sales were, and you will know how much VAT you owe. So this system actually today even helps businesses to have a pre-filled return, which is web best. So by the time you go on our URL website and you put in your TIN as a business and you access the, the web forms, that web form will come to you already populated 
with the business transactions you have been doing because this is technology and these are innovations that help one to do business. So for many people, you only have to look at that pre-filled form and you confirm that, yeah, these transactions are accurate and you press send and your VAT form is filed. So it's a system to enable businesses to collect. It helps them also to monitor their records because many businesses actually have found out that without the, with the, with the IFRI system, even their own employees have been fraudulently scheming from them. With such a system, all records are transparent. As a business owner, all your business is accessible to you, either on a phone, on a laptop, or on a device that you want. So it is a system. And this system, ideally, while it helps a business, it also helps the taxman to be able to monitor the collection and payment of VAT. So in that way, there is a level of transparency that the IFRI system brings, that we know how your business is performing. We know how much you owe us in tax and we will not collect any more than we need to. The electronic physical receipting and invoicing system or IFRS was introduced to improve business efficiencies and reduce the cost of compliance through improved record keeping among taxpayers to prevent administrative inadequacies in verifying receipts and invoices issued by taxable persons. What we have been able to unearth here is that there have been companies who have been engaging in VAT uh, fraud by declaring uh, non-existent sales, by companies declaring non-existent exports. And these people basically are playing in terms of VAT. The beauty with the IFRI system is that it keeps a record that gives us a basis to begin making an investigation, whether it's a forensic investigation or things of the kind. That is the very reason why URA has now a fully-fledged science lab. And this science lab is used for tax administration purposes. It is just like if you import textile today, we are able to use science to tell which type of textile you have imported because each different type of textile has a different import duty rate that may be applicable to it and give or take. So IFRIS was not designed for fraudulent purposes, but it is there to monitor and help people to manage. But it gives us a basis also to start fighting fraud compared to a situation if there was no system at all. So we really think that IFRIS is the future of, of tax monitoring and administration because while it reduces our costs in terms of tax administration and collecting this tax, it also creates transparency that a business will only submit that tax that is payable, not more, not less. IFRIS is an automated compliance system introduced by URA to manage the issuance and centralized tracking of all invoices and receipts by specified taxpayers in Uganda. VAT registered taxpayers are required to use IFRS to issue e-invoices or e-receipts for every transaction they undertake. The introduction of IFRS in 2020 has been able to curb VAT fraud, albeit to a smaller extent since its usage hasn't been embraced by everyone. IFRS invoices are issued electronically and any issuance affects the inventory and stock movement in a person's business. Uh, as Casita, we have received several petitions from our members. So we had several meetings and we tried to see that how, what's the problem with IFRS. Uh, so we have identified some issues which the traders have raised. First of all, it's the way URA is branding the IFRS program. First of all, even the uniforms, there is enforcement. So already that creates a negative perspective towards a trader to implement it. Why are you forcing me to go on the system? Uh, so URA would have packaged it in a more friendly way that is facilitating development and building capacity of the traders. That's what we thought. And then secondly, engaging the traders more. But now URA is creating another excuse that we have engaged you several times. But the traders are saying, even the Bible, we have been taught the Bible for some good time. But even up to now, some phases, we don't understand some, but some phases. So we need to sensitize 
our members. Let you not get tired of sensitizing. The fact is, the program would have been good, but why can't you are a show the advantages of this program to the trader? So through self engagements, they are trying to tell us that this system, you can claim the VAT. So in mind for the trader, why should the trader live like 40 million to the government and you don't claim it? So the question was so easily answered that the penalties in this system and I think the system which they used to sensitize the traders, maybe the traders never understood it so well. Secondly, why can't you are a revist the penalties to be a little bit friendly so that a trader who is enrolled in this system is not scared of making losses? One challenge that we have faced in this is businesses continuing calling IFRIS a tax. And I need to mention categorically that IFRIS, the Electronic Fiscal Receipting and Invoicing Solution, is a business solution. It is like if you have an accounting software, <coughs> if you're a supermarket, if you have an accounting software, if you're a manufacturer. Many people use accounting softwares like QuickBooks, for example. This is what it is. You're not going to call QuickBooks a tax. But this solution is helping to monitor and create a level of transparency in the way we monitor VAT tax. So the tax involved is the value added tax. This tax is paid by consumers. Businesses are collecting agents for this tax. So principally, these are the key things that we have all wanted the businesses to know about IFRIS. The reasons why people are failing to appreciate IFRIS and fighting it, I think are a little beyond the functionalities of IFRIS and what it is. I think there are other political and mindset issues around VAT other than its practicality. I think where the taxation system lost it is uh, adopting certain things that are done in developed countries and uh, imposing them on a society or a community or an economy that is not yet ready to receive that kind of taxation system. For instance, in countries that have managed to do what people are trying to do here, the middle income segment is big, you see? And definitely, when that segment is big, you have a bigger saucepan where to pick the people to pay the taxes. Yeah. Taxation, even biblically, is good. The only problem comes on one, when you are taxing from a segment or an audience that was never prepared for the abrupt shock or change. So certain introductions have to be gradual, the preparation, not to, you know, to come in that, I, I don't want to call it force. Yeah, because even in the Bible, I mean, every, everybody pays tax. I mean, the world all over people pay tax. I'll, I'll first share my example, and I want people out there, including you, are to take it. I. I borrowed money from a financial institution. I leased the land. The land is not even my in Ichanja. Then I spent a whole year constructing a market and what. And for another whole year, I only had four tenants because I, maybe I didn't do enough visibility study. Then I borrowed more money to construct now lockups. And when I constructed them, people entered. So from the time I constructed and now, I have never even banked one shilling. Like I have never gotten any penny. I have actually been using my money from other businesses to pay the owner of the land. But on Tuesday, think yeah, URA came and they wanted everybody in the lockup, even the startups to pay. And they were given uh, invoices of a certain amount. So I, I think, and let me use this uh, opportunity, to appeal to URA, just like financial institutions or a, any other organization, let's sit down and profile different categories of taxpayers, allocate relationship managers to first sit down and do an audit of this individual you are going you know, to ask to pay a certain amount of money. Because really, if they came, they would rather close it because I have even lost the amount I borrowed and I still have to pay the bank 
uh, a certain amount of money every 28th of the month. So let URA profile the different people and put certain categories and get to understand so that the amount of money or the taxation policy they are going to impose on a given consumer is based on the report of the relationship manager, not a blanket, you know, not a blanket intervention. There are some people who are not ready for whatever URA is, is trying to do. I, I, I mean, I understand URA is doing its job and any country that is healthy needs taxes. But how you do it, you don't want to see dra you, you draining people and every time you have people going back to the village, you know, and their, their businesses have collapsed. Yeah, but that's not, you know, uh, something I really want to drill on, but I just want uh, the system to be fair. The system to base on the real cash flow not on the presumptions. Thank you so much for being part of this week's edition of NBS's Business Perspective. We welcome you back from the Easter holiday. Let's catch up next week. Same time, same place. I am Isabella Tugumani.